Buen capo and welcome. My name is Jamie and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the importance of corn in Powhatan culture. The importance of corn in Powhatan or Eastern Algonquian society here in Tidewater, Virginia can be um, summarized by the fact that they had five seasons that were specifically tied to when they're harvesting their corn. So they're going to be um, staggering how they plant it, they're going to be bringing in it at different times, but they have an entire fifth season dedicated to the earing of their corn. So they have winter, spring, summer the earring of their corn and the fall of the leaves. So they have our main seasons, but they also have that extra season tied to specifically corn. In Powhatan culture, it was the woman's job to grow corn. So the women and the men were both considered providers in the family. The women bring in a lot of the food through agriculture and through gathering, while the men bring it in through hunting and fishing. And because um, they're matrilineal, women have a very high status in society, which also may be enforced by the fact that they bring in their main grain crop. So corn is going to be the substitute for most of the grains we use today, so wheat and barley and rye and all the other grains that, that we eat now that were originally brought in from Europe. Um, traditionally, among native cultures, uh, corn is going to take their place. So corn is going to be prepared in a lot of different ways. So the first thing you're going to do is when you plant your first cycle of corn, you're going to start by um, eating green corn in the ears, usually roasted, but sometimes they would just take that shuck and they would pull it right off and eat the green corn. It was considered um, a delicacy to just pull it right off and to get that fresh green corn while it's still got a little bit of that sugar flavor in it. And sometimes they would just eat it fresh. Sometimes they would take this whole corn cob and roast it in a fire. And it was you know, a pretty special treat because coming out of the spring when you don't have a lot of things growing and you're running out of some of the food that you were hunting over the winter time, corn, uh, fresh corn coming in out of the garden would be, would be a really big treat for them. They're going to let a lot of the rest of it go to ear and um, dry it. So what they're going to be eating throughout the times where you don't have fresh corn is, is basically dried corn. So you could, again, reconstitute that cob and, and cook it or cook the kernels in a soup. Or you could pound it up in a mortar and pestle and make meal out of it. So what they're going to be eating for bread in Eastern Algonquian culture is, is cornbread. So it's all going to be kind of a flat bread. They don't have anything that's going to make it rise but they will make um, a couple of different types of bread out of this cornmeal. So they might actually put it into a patty, so it would be kind of like a, like a pancake consistency, and cook it on hot stones right near the fire, and bake it. So it's gonna be like a kind of like a cornbread, but not sweet. And they may also make something that is a little bit like dumplings with cornmeal. So they will um, roll it into a ball and drop it into boiling water and eat it very much like a dumpling, which they could eat just as is or in a soup. They also would sometimes take the corn husk and wrap it in the corn husk like a tamale today. So you wrap it up in there and you boil it just like you would with the dumpling, but the, um, the husk will keep it a little bit softer consistency than you get when you actually just drop it right in the boiling water. So cornbread, dumplings, um, something very much like a tamale are going to be kind of the common breads you're going to make with corn. But they also make a lot of um, soups and stews consistent with corn as well. And um, the English describe when they come over here a soup that is made specifically just with corn and beans. It's called pasoramina. And um, you know, that's going to get them through a lot of the winter times, drying some of that corn and drying beans and putting them in a soup and boiling them together. They also would sometimes prepare those dried kernels into hominy. And hominy is basically kind of like fluffy corn that you would um, kind of scrub the outer husk off of. So it is going to be boiled for hours in a solution of lye and water and the lye kind of changes the consistency of it, makes it very soft and causes that hard outer shell on the corn to be able to be scrubbed off. So this is going to be um, 
something that's a very nutritious dish is actually going to be another one that gets them through the winter because something about boiling it with that lye adds a little bit of extra nutrition to it as well. So hominy throughout the winter, sometimes just boiling it with beans throughout the winter. Um, so corn is really going to get them throughout most of the year. Um, you know, so they would um, use it as their bread all year long. They would use it in their soups all year long. Sometimes they're eating it right out of the, the ear. Um, so it's, it's a very important food source. But corn also seems to have some religious significance for the Eastern Algonquian cultures as well, because when the English get here, they write down a little bit about the religion that was practiced here before Christianity comes in and takes over. And part of that religion um, involves corn very heavily. So whenever they talk about the Powhatan priests, they describe them using a lot of ceremonies involving corn. They talk about one in particular, when John Smith was visiting one of the villages, he talks about them taking dried, pounded corn and sprinkling it around a fire and that would represent the um, the area they live in so kind of the land that they're living on and they talk about taking kernels and then sprinkling them around the outside of that circle as well which would represent the sea and then they would lay sticks kind of outside of that to represent some of the um, other peoples that live out there that they didn't know about and they would include the English as well so part of that ceremony was them trying to figure out if the English are going to stay and if more of them are going to come over as well. So religious significance, it has of course food significance, and it's just um, also just you know cultural and community significance. Again, when you're coming out of a long winter or a long spring season when you don't have a lot of fresh food, the importance of taking that corn out of the garden fresh and having it as a staple crop throughout the rest of the year is very important in their cultures. So that's a little bit about um, the Powhatan uses of corn and the Eastern Algonquian uses of corn. If you liked our video, please comment, like, and subscribe to our channels. And uh, thank you and join us next time.